OK, now it's time to take apart the capacitive discharge ignition system. So I've pre-soaked this in a suitable solvent and the plastic on the outside is dissolved and it's revealed the same as before. It's revealed that the inside has been filled with sand. Most of the sand is now at the bottom of my little epoxy tub, uh, so to say solvent tub. So as I peel this off, it's revealing the same as before, a single-sided circuit board. I can see the big capacitor in the back here. This is for the capacitive discharge. Um, so I'm going to actually depot this and then I shall reverse engineer it. But this is a, this is where we are so far. It's, a, it's fairly easy to open because the entire outer package dissolved this time. In the case of the rectifier and regulator with its appallingly simple circuit. It was at least a nice metal case, but in this case it was a plastic case and that dissolved quite readily in the solvent. So um, I shall depot this completely and reverse engineer it and then we can explore the circuitry. Next technological gift from the cheap Chinese wiring loom for a quad or scooter is the capacitive discharge ignition module. This is quite interesting, it's very typical of what you might find. In this instance, the unit had been potted into a plastic housing, um, but it had once again been filled with sand as a packer and then a layer of resin put on top. So you might be getting deja vu when you see the little particles of sand everywhere. It's a single-sided circuit board. It has a big fat capacitor in the back. This capacitor gets discharged. It gets charged to quite high voltage and then it gets dumped through the winding of the ignition coil. And that's what creates the spark. Let me just grab the ignition coil. Here is the ignition coil, which has the uh, low voltage input and then it's got the high voltage output to the spark plug. So the circuit board has a thyristor, which uh, thyristors are very good at dumping current suddenly because when they're triggered, they're very easy to trigger and then when they turn on, they latch. So they basically discharge that capacitor with a thump and uh, dump all the energy through the coil. They're, it's just one of the things that they're pretty good for. Uh, other than that, we've got not got much on the circuit board. We've got uh, a diode, which is charging the capacitor, which is across here through the coil. I'll show you the, the schematic. I have reverse engineered it. It's different to what I was expecting. Uh, but I'll show you the, the components. We've got the sense input. Most of the circuitry here is for the sense input that is used to trigger the thyristor. It's basically a diode and then an array of resistors and capacitors for filtering. And then it goes over to trigger the gate of the thyristor to turn it on. Let me show you the schematic. So this thing is powered from the magneto. The alternator, which has, aside from the lighting and the battery charging feeds, it also puts out a sense signal once per revolution on the flywheel. And it also puts out high voltage. Uh, in the region about 200 volts, that kind of suggests, I've never really thought this before, that uh, even away from the ignition circuit, you could potentially get an electric shock off the contacts on the back of the ignition switch and also the kill switch in the engine because uh, they actually render this unit, they actually disable this unit in an interesting way, which does involve the full output voltage being across them. So we've got the sense winding feeding this sort of, uh, set of components, but let's start with the high voltage. The high voltage comes in and it charges via this diode, it charges that capacitor and the capacitor is in series with the primary of the ignition transformer. So that capacitor charges up, and then when the sense coil uh, is detected, uh, it, the magnet passes it and induces current in it. That comes via this diode. There's a 3.3 microfarad filter capacitor, and then strangely, two 680 ohm resistors in parallel, so that's 340 ohms. And then a 10 microfarad capacitor, possibly to just allow, I'm not sure why they've got that. It's a very strange range in here. There's a pull down resistor here to the gate of the thyristor. This 10 microfarad might be just to pass the changing voltage. I'm not really sure why they've done that. Again, they may have copied someone else's circuitry. But uh, it triggers the thyristor. The tr thyristor turns on when it does, it suddenly discharges that capacitor. But when it does so, the winding of the ignition transform coil 
is actually in the path. And while that was charged slowly before, now it's being given a huge pulse of current from this capacitor. That induces high voltage and output, which then creates the spark that fires the cylinder. Um, things worthy of note and unexpected is they've got a diode here that effectively shunts the high voltage winding on every half wave. So it's only as it's going positive at this end that it's actually charging that capacitor up. When it goes negative, it bridges it. I'm not sure why they do that. The kill connection here is interesting because it's just bridged to the high voltage output. And when you want to turn the engine off, you literally just bridge it down to the chassis. And that's where this will potentially have that across it because this is four wires. It's got the red wire, which is the positive coming from the battery, and that switches to the black wire, which is a terrible choice of colour, but that is the switched positive black. Seriously? Uh, so when you turn this ignition key on, it bridges the red and black. But when you turn it off, the green wire is connected to the chassis, the white with the black stripe is connected to the high voltage uh, kill, and when you turn it off, it bridges those out, and that's how it turns the engine off, because you don't need a battery. To, if you can kickstart this engine, the alternator will effectively be charging that capacitor up as it rotates, and then the sense will be actually firing it, and it would power lights and everything. It just doesn't need the battery at all uh, if you just bump or kickstart this thing. However, this network of components here is strangely complex because there is another design floating about on the internet. Someone has reverse engineered another unit, perhaps a more upmarket unit. And it's a Piaggio. And in this instance, the circuitry is infinitely simpler. We've got the same high voltage coming in via the diode, charging up that capacitor via the uh, ignition transformer's primary winding, which is a very low resistance. It's only about one, one ohm or less. The output winding, on the other hand, because it's a series of very fine windings, that's 2,000 ohms in resistance. I'll call it resistance, could call it impedance, but ultimately DC resistance is 2,000 ohms. Other things worthy of note here. It works the same way. The thyristor gets triggered, dumps that, uh, bridges out the capacitor and, and sears the coil and results in a sudden pulse of current through this to actually create the spark in the high voltage output. But there is this protection diode here that normally, as the current's charging up, it will not really, if anything, it will provide a, would theoretically provide a path across that coil. But the coil is such a low resistance, it doesn't really matter. However, when this coil fires, there's a back EMF spike. You often see a sort of peak of current and then it will be a negative uh, spike occurs afterwards as the magnetic field collapses again. That's what this diode clamps, um, which is going to pr provide extra protection for the thyristor. That's not present in the JP Chinese design. The sense circuitry is infinitely simpler. It's got a 15 nan nanofarad capacitor across the sense to chassis, and the purpose of that is just to provide a little bit of filtering. If you can imagine um, a noisy signal, like say for instance, a pipe, and the pipe has got pulsing, surging water along it. If you put that into a big tank, and then you have a pipe out the other side, what will happen is that that surging water will sort of fluctuate the level in the tank, but the output will actually be fairly smooth with just a little bit of ripple. That's what the capacitor does. So it, if there's any sharp spikes that may cause false triggering of this, it should theoretically just act as that reservoir that stops from reaching the thyristor. The thyristor has this 2K4, that's 2,400 ohm resistor, pulling its gate down. They're usually quite sensitive to triggering, so it's best to keep them pulled to the sort of the negative connection to actually keep them turned off. And that just means that when it gets a nice solid ramping output from that uh, sensor, it will then, uh, via this 1K resistor, it will actually turn the thyristor on. And as before, when the thyristor turns on, as soon as its threshold is reached, it starts conducting, it kind of latches on, that capacitor gets dumped through the circuit. And then when the current drops to zero again, this will reset. And then as the winding then passes again, it then charges it up to the high voltage again. Much simpler. Very strange. But that is not the case with this one. This one is complex. I do get the feeling that uh, they've been based on other people's designs and maybe they just didn't realise the function of certain components and uh, they've ended up being shuffled about. But, the, you know, it works. So they just went with it. But there we go. Interesting. It's interesting to note that the one microfarad 400 volt capacitor is exactly the same type 
that you find in uh, LED lamps the, with capacitive droppers that are, will ration the current through in each half wave. But there we go. Interesting stuff. Well worth taking to bits. It's been very educational taking that wiring loom apart. A lot of fun. Very enjoyable indeed.